All right, so just when we thought that nerfs were done, Gaussian splattings were in, nerfs are back with a vengeance. Google DeepMind just dropped Smurf. That's a mouthful, but basically it's streamable multi-room nerfs with centimeter level detail, and it works on mobile too. Our method is readily deployable to low resource devices, including consumer grade smartphones and laptops via the web browser while rendering at 60 frames per second. It's kind of like the sweet spot between the speed of Gaussian splatting and the quality of say a zip nerf. So take a look at this. Where zip nerf is getting 0.25 frames per second in this scene, Smurf is getting 144 plus frames per second. Absolutely wild. We're well into Gaussian splatting territory, but get this, the quality is even better than Gaussian splatting. And I wasn't joking about it working on mobile. Just take a look at this. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely wild. So what are the benefits compared to 3DGS? A couple. First off, way less artifacts. But not just zip nerf, this stuff is better than Gaussian splatting. Way less artifacts and far more forgiving capture requirements. Okay, take a look at this room scene. I've done a bunch of captures like this and a splat usually looks very good, but where you didn't capture those images, you'll get all these like wonky looking floaters and sort of holes in the scene. Smurf absolutely solves this problem. So your capture requirements are far, far more forgiving. I mean, just phenomenal, phenomenal results. And you get all the view dependent effects that you're used to. There's also less floaters than Gaussian splatting. And I think the best part is it reproduces all those view dependent effects that we've come to love in nerfs, but you can't quite squeeze out of Gaussian splatting with sort of the approach for spherical harmonics. Here's a great example. You've got these like massive splats in a scene where you didn't get capture enough detail. Oh my God, look at that. You got fully recovered tiling on the ground, reflections on the fricking TV. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Another benefit is that you can train on distorted fisheye imagery directly. So obviously if you're using a wide angle fisheye, it's particularly important for large scans like this, like multi-room captures. You can capture a scene even more efficiently and even more faster. So this hierarchical structure of sort of breaking the scene into these distinct nerf models and being able to load stuff in as needed really makes this competitive on mobile. Check out the live demos linked in the description. You can choose between mobile, laptop, and desktop optimized variables and see for yourself that it is indeed superior to 3D Gaussian splatting. There's a bunch of other stuff happening around deferred appearance network partitioning and sort of having this like distillation strategy, but the short version of it is basically this like teacher model imparts the knowledge to a student model, the Smurf. So Zipnerf is basically teaching Smurf to learn how to render high quality visuals more quickly and more efficiently. The short version is Smurfs absolutely outperforms 3D Gaussian splatting and Murphs. It matches Zipnerf quality and operates at a remarkable remarkable 60 frames per second on devices like smartphones and laptops. Now it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Smurfs requires extensive training. We're talking like 200,000 steps on a powerful GPU, which obviously makes this a significant limitation for widespread adoption. In my opinion, for applications such as Google Maps Immersive View, where nerfs are used to explore interiors and exteriors in high fidelity, and it will do a great job replacing the pre-rendered 360 videos that you can find in Google Maps today. Here you can see the next partition load in. Look at that. Beautiful. All the details on the windows, the paintings, the leather, the finish and the veneer on it, everything's beautifully visible. So here's me just flying around. I encourage you to go try this demo for yourself and uh, check it out firsthand. All right, so another issue with nerfs is that they're super cool and they look great, but they're very hard to edit. If you turn them into a mesh, the geometry and the UV maps are an absolute dumpster fire. Making simple texture editing like mission impossible for your 3D artist, but not anymore. Uh, Google's other AI paper that came out called Nuvo employs neural fields for UV mapping, basically letting you edit cleanly parameterized chunks of the model. So here's what I mean. Look at that detailed mesh. You've got a bunch of non-manifold geometry, a bunch of wonky geometry in general. It's not like a bunch of clean topology. So you get a UV map that looks kind of like that. Oh my God, that is an absolute dumpster fire for any artist that wants to make some edits. Google solves this problem by using neural fields for UV mapping, letting you edit these like cleanly parameterized chunks of the model. Look at that visualize the checker pattern right there. The benefit of this is that now you can use 2D editing tools like Photoshop, Firefly in painting to edit the textures of these nerf models. It doesn't even matter if you're doing this with a real life scan or a generated one. A perfect, perfect example. Here's the uh, method in progress over here. It's getting optimized and you're getting these like cleanly parameterized chunks that are far more human readable and just easier to work with in 2D software. So when you put all this stuff together, 
together. You can go in and edit the texture of that table, throw some goldfishes on there, and even edit your Dream Fusion models. Super, super exciting. So yeah, you can do some really cool things. Maybe you made a model, made a Dream Fusion mesh, and now you can go take it into Photoshop and paint on some new textures. Same thing with this iconic garden scene. You can go into something like Firefly in painting and change the textures on the table and still have all of those cool view dependent effects and all of that because you're operating on just the albedo here. This is a great example too. You've got some like nicely including a goldfish uh, <laughs> and painted onto the plate. Again, researchers don't always do the best job of showing the creative possibilities, but for creative techies such as you and I, we can immediately see where this stuff is going, right? All right, it's amazing paper, a uh, super super exciting stuff. So to wrap things up, Reality Capture is continuing to move really fast. Just when everyone thought that Radiance Fields are going to move on to this new Gaussian splatting based representation, we're now seeing that nerfs can still be competitive. On the other hand, I expect we'll see yet another wave of papers that focus on Gaussian splats as sort of the representation. The perfect example being a bunch of the real-time slam work that's happening right now. And while it is true, you can make some really, really amazing things with Gaussian splats, but I suspect we'll keep seeing advancements in Gaussian and splatting as well. Like clearly this is the new kid on the block and super hot for all the researchers in this space. So we're seeing some amazing things. For example, real-time 3D Gaussian splatting, right? Like simultaneous localization and mapping that's operating on this like Gaussian splat representation. Just look at this, absolutely wild and a slam dunk if you ask me. I love to make bad jokes, but you know, you're just gonna have to put up with this. All right, so who knows who's gonna win? All I know is Radiance Fields are here to stay, whether it's neural, not neural, who the hell cares at the end of the day it's all reality capture and there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with it if you missed that video go check it out over here super excited to show you a bunch of other cool stuff on the horizon if you like this video if this was valuable be sure to hit a like please subscribe and hit that bell icon it's super cringeworthy to do this but you have to especially in the early stages of a channel like this thank you again for your support and i will see y'all in the next one